everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today we are going to paint, we're like the, the companion painting to the Kringle there. Tingle, the Snow Gorgeous. There we ah. go. Woo! That's me, just in case. Uh, I forgot I have a nice little bumper that tells me who I am and bubbles to remind me why. It's so fun to be here on a Saturday. So what are we doing today? Today... I'm going to show you how to paint Snow Gorgeous, this really gorgeous painting. And I have a couple of things that I'm going to do. I'm going to explain every step of the painting. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. And he's going to do a couple things here. He's going to switch cameras and make sure you see every technique and every action I'm taking. He's also going to get rid of that echo that's messing me up because you ever been on a Skype call and it does an echo and then you're like trying to talk, but you're hearing yourself like on a two second delay and you're like, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> and it's gone now. And my brain is calm. <laughs> So I'm going to show you how to paint this. We're doing this on a 16 by 20 canvas today with acrylic paint. I do explain every technique. I do explain every uh, color mix. I do explain every brush. But on top of that, I have some extra resources for new students, especially on Saturdays. We have a traceable that is free for you to print out. And you can get it to a 16 by 20 size in the poster setting of your printer. I don't know all your printers, so I don't really have much more advice than that except to tile it in your print settings. Um, I, we also have a very special and unique to us resource, how to paint the, uh, the Snow Gorgeous. And this is a really fun one because this tells you the materials you'll be using and it gives you the steps, extra information on color mixes in case you need that, extra information written out, extra tips that you might not know about, and even information on how to mill art, gift art, all of that, like what to do at the end, some vocabulary. So guess what? This be free too. <laughs> so you just download that out. I'm going to make sure our steps in the video match the steps to this. That way, if you're doing this at home, you have the best time doing that. And on top of that, we do another thing, which is I chapter time stamp to match the steps at the end, this live video. So you can go back to the step you were on. Because here, John and I are all about the students. Mm. It is about you guys and nobody else. So that is what we've got for you. I want to say hi to everybody that came to the live today. I also want to give a, a love to Emoji Club that's showing up. You guys have a new emoji, so you can send love to anybody that needs it, the winged heart. And um, I drew that out, so hopefully you guys like that. All right, let's switch this up. I'm going to put my reference up here mm -hmm. way above me. She's so high above me. And I'm going to give myself a new fresh, a new ready fresh to be painted one. 16 by 20 canvas. Now, I just get these at Michael's in packs, right? You can buy them online in packs. You can buy them as boards or stretch canvases. Or you can paint in, on an 8 by 10 uh, piece of canvas paper. Because that's the same aspect ratio and fits your printer really easily. What? Um, what? So Stephanie was like, what's that lady's name? No, not the one with the pink hair. The one in the painting. Snow Gorgeous. <laughs> Snow Gorgeous. Her name is Snow Gorgeous. Her name is Snow Gorgeous. I'm very proud of her. You want to see her I again? I think she's turned out pretty I'm, I'm really happy. She started out as a digital design of an idea I had. And then she has progressed into something pretty spectacular and fabulous. What? What? what Oh, you got paint on your TARDIS. Is that what I have is paint on my TARDIS? I have paint on my TARDIS. <laughs> she has, she, your, your TARDIS has some yellow ochre on it. My TARDIS does have some yellow ochre on it. I should do some, get some rubbing alcohol. It, it actually may be Naples brush yellow. Brush rescue. And, knowing, knowing you, it's Naples yellow. Could be Naples yellow. Could be. Step. Okay, so Hello. let's go over the materials. Don't put up step one yet. I'll tell okay, you when no, to put no, up step one. Leslie, uh, uh, Leslie joined Emoji Club. <gasps> Welcome, enjoy your 13 emojis. They give me very few emojis per members to the club. Was this a meta thing with the shirt, 13 emojis? 13th doctor? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> 16 by 20 canvas. Let's, uh, let's put some wishes or loves or intention on there. And today... Um, I have a wish that uh, everybody who's going through cabin fever finds something fun to do. Mm -hmm. Right? Something fun to do and reconnects even if it's over a Zoom meeting. So I've got that out there. And let's wish some love to first responders. Mm -hmm. Right? These are people who are not able to stay home. 
and also really to everyone right now who is not able to stay home and has to go and work. So love to all essential workers. Boy, are these videos going to be dated. <laughs> Everyone's going to be like, I know when this was filmed. All right, so colors. I have phthalo green, phthalo blue, burnt sienna, Mars black, titanium white. I've got two of these out here because I'm going to use these up in the beginning. Cadmium red, quinacridone magenta, cad yellow medium, a little yellow ochre. To do the snow splatter, I'm going to be using the golden fluid artist color here in titanium white, same color. If you don't have that, you'll have to thin your heavy body paint down to consistency. I've got a chalk pencil and a watercolor pencil so I can sketch my girl in. You can also use your Dritz chalk tool if that's what you have. And I have an Art Sherpa pouncer. Um, I'm using my smallest size to do the ornaments today, assorted brushes for acrylic. How's that sound, sir? Mm. Ah, I love it. I've got my Marcy on today. So I'm going to leave my white out and my blue out because that's where we're going to start. And then I'll let John know when he's going to put up the step one and hold it for a minute longer because I've got to timestamp them and they're really hard to find in these videos. Mm. Did you know that? Do I, I, I did. All right. You may now. Oh. Put up step one. Do you, okay. So, let me see if so I can. Then I'm going to find it. Sure. And I'm going to timestamp it. Oh, sh step one. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Okay. Okay. I can find that sucker again. <laughs> so, here's what you're doing. So, step one is a two parter it is the background, and then there's one A, which is where we get the image on. Lots of ways to do that, but let's get this background in. Okay. On these bigger canvases, sometimes they have an issue with being what I like to call thirsty. Not thirsty for knowledge, my friends, mm -hmm. but thirsty for paint. Or they are resistant. Oh, my goodness. See, I was out, like, like I'm down to the last little bit. Do you guys ever do this where you're like, I want to get the last squeeze of paint out? And I have a show and I have so much white paint. This is a weird me thing is what this is. Oh, I see creative girl of color with Daniel B. All right. Pulling that in. And I'm seeing Connie and Alex 3 Eclipse. And Rama. I know I saw Raheel earlier. I see Karen and Linda Sue plus all my mods. Now, guys, the moderators on our channel are a little different than other moderators. They are your guides and your hosts. And they're also viewers like you. So, hey, baby. Mm. I'm talking. Well, you were putting out meaningful paint. over here. You're putting paint. Meaningful. Right, be meaningful. So I just want to say that when you see a moderator, say moderator and a wrench, because a lot of people have their people call themselves moderators after we did that, which causes some confusion. So the moderators for this show have a wrench and they are butterflies. They are your hosts. They generally know where every link is, every resource. So even if we They're miss a blue. question, they huh? got blue names. And they have blue names. Mm -hmm. Club right? members have green names. Huh? Club members get have green, green names. names. All right. right. Club members have green names. The blue name butterflies are your host and guide. Mm -hmm. I have a thousand videos. There's a lot of resources, a lot of programs, a lot of, a lot of stuff on our website it can be overwhelming when you're new. They're here to help you. So look at them as like, like they've got the happy flags and they're like, we got you. We got you. So if you have a question, definitely ask them. We try to get to as many as we can in the show. Put your questions all in caps. I'm going to do a trick here. What are you going to do? I'm going to paint my, I'm going to spray my surface with my white little water here. Water. Just water. Just water. Hi, how are you doing? It's Saturday. Just water. And I do this because the surface can be thirsty. Uh, and I'm going to just brush it out with a big brush. Mm -hmm. That erases my uh, little words into the surface. And it also kind of helps remove any weird blech. That they might have put on the surface. That's Come on. <laughs> super helpful. I checked my part today because we're but we're new back to switching, so I checked my part because otherwise it can get crazy, crazy. Patty Halfwin, does anyone have green names? Patty's like she's got a green name, and she's like, who has green names? I'm gonna take my big brush. And I'm going to load it up pretty heavily. Do you notice, if you're very new to painting, notice that I flip the brush over. Mm -hmm. That actually helps me get more paint onto the brush. And I'm going to brush the whole canvas that is mildly damp with a bit of white. The purpose of this is to make sure that when I come back with my light blue, 
because thalo blue is such a strong color and can overwhelm beginners, mm -hmm. really overwhelm anybody, it protects you from getting too dark of a color. All right, I, when I dip in the water too, the other thing I want you to see is that I go right here and I barely touch the water. See how it just barely gets the bristles in it and it's mm -hmm. still that wet? That's because hog brushes tend to uh, pull in a lot more water. I'm gonna make a light blue. I'm gonna come through here. And with a loose back and forth stroke, paint a blue background. The brush strokes kind of crisscross like this. They're not patterned though. They're very random. And the effort is to give yourself a fairly diffused background. If I dip in the water, I do so lightly as we did before. If you get any hog bristles ever in your canvas, all I do is flick them out like this when the surface is still wet. Mm. Whoop. That's not uncommon on natural bristles, um, but it shouldn't be uh, copious. This is a newer brush. Uh, always rinse your brushes out when you buy them, especially if they have natural hair or bristles. Now, when it's like that, I'm gonna do a little extra touch to give it some personality. I'll come into my blue, get a little darker blue. All right, come here. And just a couple places, you can see we add some personality. It's light, it's loose, it's open. Anywhere that I get lines, I can just brush back over it. So you can see we can get to the depth of the canvas without difficulty. We get our surface coated and we have a nice diffused kind of bluish background. Mm -hmm. Be sure to wash your brushes at home right after using them. Okay, now I am gonna dry this so we can do part 1A, which you don't need a step for. Okay. Okay. So while she's drying that, I'll say, don't forget to, you know, use uh, low heat when drying your surface, um, you know, because it, it, can ca it can cause stickiness, it can cause delamination, heat can cause all sorts of problems. Just keep it in the lowest heat setting. Don't forget, uh, thoroughly dry between your layers. And thank you guys for joining Emoji Club. Thank you, Rebecca. If you're on an iDevice, you may have some trouble joining um, because the uh there's a thing between youtube and apple so you may not be able to see the emoji option next to your if you've subscribed and joined there should be a emoji option in there i'm not exactly sure where you find it but uh, i've not seen it myself um but that's how you would join if you're already a subscriber it's down in that area uh, but I don't think you can see it if you're on an iPad or on an iPhone. You have to be on, like, an Android device or on a regular desktop type of <laughs> thing. I saw we got a new Emoji Club member, and everyone's like, I can't see the green. Um, I'm going to be real candid. Uh, Emoji Club is fun, but the reason I made it super cheap is because it's, it's not on iPads. It's not on every device. And they're kind of stingy with the emojis that they let us have. You guys have 13 emojis right now. But... uh. I have to get to 5,000 members before YouTube will even talk to me about like letting me have, not right now, not right now. They give me lots and lots of emojis, but like I wanted to have hundreds of emojis, but apparently to get past 150 emojis, you have to talk to them. You have to have 5,000 members. Mm -hmm. What's that conversation even going to be about? I don't even I don't know. know. It was just in the, it was in the instructions and I just thought to myself, please. Mm. <laughs> I did. My eyes rolled up so far they got stuck, but I just thought, I like custom emojis, and I'm going to go for it anyways. So uh, if you're not seeing the green, it's because it doesn't work on all devices. I see that Alex uh, oh, Gaming same, same. is looking for a mod. We yes. have, uh, we have fr I saw people come in from the Netherlands. Hi, Netherlands. Hello. Hello. Oh, and we want to give a special uh, hello to Iceland. Hi, Iceland. Hello, Iceland. <laughs> Nobody says hi to, hi to Iceland. They get, you know. They're the, I'm they're about the, it now. They're the most Viking of the... Are they? I don't, Nordic. I don't know. That's true. Don't start stuff with other no, Nordic people. They're, 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 they sort of went, no, we're going to this island. You guys. <laughs> they're on a keep, continent. Keep, keep your. Their continent. Yeah, I know. But they were, <laughs> they were like, stay gonna... off. <laughs> just this is us and not you. I don't know. I've never been there. I'm just saying hi. This is all my list. <laughs> hi, Netherlands. Hi, Sweden. Hi, all Hello, of everyone. Everybody. Oh, my Hello. gosh. 
So when we have it like this, we're going to sketch her in. Now, I All am right. going to show you how to do this, and we're going to talk about how you do a face and some easy tricks that if you're really new to doing art can help you do better faces. I had a whole year-long program on faces, so we have this kind of really, really down. <laughs> mm. So you're going to like that. But first, we need to really think about where she is right on the surface. And you want to make sure that you're going to put her face about the same place. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you go there, you go, oh, it's about there. Because I need to make sure I've got room for hair and everything and still top of canvas is okay. Because I don't like to go uh, small with my hair. It's not my, it's not my favorite. Now, okay. if you're not using the traceable, your face may look different than my face. My face kind of is different every time I do it. That's okay. She'll still be snow gorgeous. The first part, and I'm going to use a watercolor uh, pencil here so that it will disappear into my figure. And also I'm using black so you can see her. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do a head. And it's going to be kind of an egg shape. Right? Which means it will come down a little bit to a soft point. Here we go. See how we got here? And the wonderful thing about watercolor pencil is you can really, really change your mind. Just like with chalk. There we go. Just a little bit of a oval. Pretty cool. Pretty yeah. awesome. It's a. On either, if you think this is the chin right here, on either side of the chin, we're going to do a nice long neck because we're going to use fashion illustration principles to kind of get this in. I like to do the shoulders as a hanger. The hanger comes out just a little bit past her head. And that's where I'll put in my little shoulder bits, the face. And if we can get in on this face, John. I'm, 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 I I'm just letting you. Sure. <laughs> Actually, there. we can do that part later because we got to paint this in. I'll okay. show you the face features. There's a trick about division, but we'll do that when we actually put the fa features in. That way you don't lose her when you're painting her. I am going to just real quickly give myself this first thing, if I take her face and divide it in half and then come down just about the halfway mark, that helps me put in the ears. Otherwise, it can be a little hard to know where her ears go. Mm. Right? You're a lot more forehead than you think. Yeah. Now, I'm going to come down a bit. And I do this little downward triangle initially. I'm going to put all her awesome womanly features on her. But if I give myself this little triangle as a guide. What type of pencil is that? This is the Caron Osh Super Color Soft Watercolor Pencils. If you got the colored pencils with our coloring book, they'll work for this too. So the size of the triangle is the size of the head. Mm. It's just a general guide. At the point of the triangle, I'm going to start curving out what I'm going to make as her waist. And when I sketch the skirt down, I need to sketch it in more than I need so I have room to do flicky brush strokes. Mm. So I'm going to bring this in. If you'll notice, it's going to curve down. Right? But not go all the way to the edge. Even though the skirt's going to come off, this gives me room to go flick and not have to see my little signs. The reason I want to know where my waist is, is her elbows if they were straight, would be at her waist. So we want to fulcrum them up. So the length of her arms that are out re reaching and catching snow, because she's being gorgeous and amazing in the snow. That's her purpose, being gorgeous and amazing in the snow. I want to make sure that they would be about to here if we swung them down. Generally, hmm. if they get longer or much shorter, they won't look right no matter, even if the image is stylized. They can start looking. Yeah. Look. A little alien. A little bit. It can look, it can look like you had a moment. So the trick is, even if you're doing a stylized piece, if you keep certain aspect ratios of everything to everything else, it'll look right mm -hmm. and you get a lot of forgiveness. Now the hand. Here's going to be our wrist. So we're going to bend out a palm of a hand. And I'm going to bring that there. I'm going to do a matching one here. On her arms, her upper arms are bigger, right? 
then her lower arms. So we want to make sure that I've got room for that. So her little arm will bow out a bit. These are just little details that you can get in. If you don't get them, it's going to be okay. They're not required. A little bit of a shoulder going there. And the hand is very stylized, right? So it's really just a thumb and her fingers. So I'm just going to give myself enough of that to not lose it. She's looking pretty good. Now, as a girl with a bit up top, I tend to do my girls with a bit up top. Mm. Right? That's just my preference. That isn't right or wrong. It's just a preference that I have. We just a preference, preference that I have. It's okay. Right. We, sh we share that preference. <laughs> <laughs> well, that worked out well for both of us, didn't it? <laughs> it did. I came this way. It works out that way. Okay. So this helps me also determine the top of her dress line and kind of lets me give her that Jessica Rabbit figure. Gorgeous figure. I know, and then this right here is going to be my bodice that's smooth, and the beginning of the flex will start at the bottom of the dress. So now we've done 1A and 1B. Let's recap. Recap. Recap, 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 so we know what we did and can do it at home. Okay, so what we did is we misted the canvas with a micro mister. You could also use a spray bottle. You just don't want to get it soaking. You just want to create a light, damp surface on it. And that helps kind of get any gook or stuff off the canvas that we don't want. We brushed it all with a large brush, just a big, uh, these are sometimes referred to as chip brushes. They come in qualities. You could also use um, a big synthetic, right? It's just you want to be able to cover a big area. Mm -hmm. um, so we brushed it all with titanium white paint. While it was still wet, we mixed a very light blue color using phthalo blue and titanium white and brushed it in loose kind of crisscrossing strokes all the way through creating a light blue color. We went back, added a slightly darker blue up here at the top and kind of brushed in some personality. Then using a watercolor pencil, we sketched in our figure onto the surface. And your options at home were, you could use the traceable uh, as, as a guide too if you didn't want to draw this. Or you could use projection. There's a lot of ways to get an image on a surface. So that, let's sip our coffee and blow our bubbles because we did it. We did it. We did it. So if. And now things. you can put up step two because step two is next. Okay, we'll get, let me answer a couple questions first. Mm. So if you're having trouble with, and everything seems a little blurry, mm -hmm. check the gear and your resolution. You may be running it not 1080p. But if you bump it up to 1080p, it should be nice and crisp and clear. And if you have any reservation about drawing this, get the traceable. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. Tracing is not cheating. It is an art technique. They teach it in art school. They teach projection. They teach you how to build a camera obscura. They teach a lot of ways. They teach you to use gridding. There are so many methods besides freehand that is taught in art school, and there's a bunch of reasons for it. So as a student, never feel bad about using the traceable. You can always add drawing skills to your own personal art journey. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just make today pleasant. Make today fun. You know, get the best result for yourself today and then tomorrow add a new skill add a new skill add a new skill it's just all fun like i don't i don't do every art skill i do i do all the art skills he says that i don't do every art skill i don't know what all the art skills are but i will do them all he would probably do them all you're would... thinking that i don't cast but i do cast i've cast in bronze so you don't have that up on me no i don't think i have it up i, I don't do, do stained glass no i would just i would try mm. them all I'm, I'm like There's a, too much bleeding. I did that. I bled for my glass. He did. He did stained glass. He bled. So that's fair on him. All right. <laughs> All right. Are you ready for the next step? Uh, well, I want to. I want to just check this real quick and get caught up on chat. Just make sure. Have I missed anything? Oh, uh, welcome, okay. Michelle. Um, and Laura's like the easel's back. How do you erase a mess if you mess up with watercolor pencil? Oh my gosh! I'm so glad I saw that before we moved on. Okay. Do Can it. I show you that real quick? And then we'll, we'll yeah, pop up the step two. It's your show. So like if, stop. Like, let's say I messed up and I'll grab one of my, the brush is not important. I'm just grabbing a brush. All right. I'm going to take clean water 
And I'll come here to the center. Okay, hold on a second. Whoa. If the surface underneath is dry. What? 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 Is it not going? Can they see it? Oh, yeah, they can see it. You've just got to fix the thing. It got loose on that thing. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm just taking a damp brush and removing. And then I would dry and just go over it again. So the reason I recommend real chalk, right, chalk that's clay-based, and watercolor pencils and not oil-based pencils is oil-based pe pencils prevent the acrylic from sticking to the surface of them. And uh, they um, are not easily removed, whereas chalk is easily removed and doesn't damage the subsequent layers of painting. So, oh, J just Jade Beauty says, what is that fluffy brush you're using? This is, I have a couple brushes that are in my high recommend list. Um, that you might not normally have in your kit. One of them is the number 12 Princeton Round Blender. It is a fantastic brush for blending and softening lines. It does great clouds. It does great techniques. A lot of cool stuff. The other brush I think artists should have in their kit is what's called an oval mop. These are three different varieties of oval mop. I've got a Princeton. I have my favorite, which is the uh, silver brush mop. The only issue with some of the silver brush stuff is their ferrules will get loose over time, so you've got to re-glue them down. Um, so I've got the silver brush mom here, and I've got my uh, Minta. Uh, this is a Royal and Lang nickel. Hmm. The head, though, uh, of all these, this is my favorite head of all of them. Like, it just it's in the Goldilocks zone is what it is. So uh, you'll hear us talk about the Goldilocks zone. That's when things are just right. Just you know, right. Just right. And everything, every technique, every purpose has a Goldilocks zone. And the Goldilocks zone is always shifting. All right. Are we there? I don't know. You ready to put up a step two, sir? I'm going to sip more coffee and hope you heat it. For me like again. this? Sure. Yeah. Step two, snow gorgeous. So now we're going to put in um, the basics of her skin tone. And um, for this particular painting, we're not trying to paint really super hyper-realistic skin tone, right? We are, we're painting a beautiful skin tone. We are painting a skin tone with some value and changes and some shaping. Um, it's definitely many steps up from a silhouette, but it is super beginner friendly. Um, I love my design the way she is, but I do have videos that the moderators can share with you on how to do different hair colors, how to do different skin tones. So if you're giving this as a gift, if you're doing something and you want her to reflect something more in your life, that is completely okay. I never, that never, ever upsets me. But I'm demonstrating this particular skin tone today and focusing in on that. But I do have resources if you want to do something else. Now that my coffee is hot, I can move on. So the skin tone is going to be a base first of burnt sienna and Mars black. And then we're going to highlight with yellow ochre. Titanium white is not even going to be involved. It's not. And I can promise you, and you can kind of see this um, in here, when, we, when we're doing the girl, we're blocking in the girl. That's what's called in. We're going to need to do two coats of the burnt sienna with just a little bit of the black, right, to get in there. So let's do that. Let's put out some burnt sienna and a little Mars black, shall we? Shall we? Sure. I like that I have to write these out now for Saturday because it really makes me think about where am I going? <laughs> Do I belong here? <laughs> I, I just heard like the song in my head. You know I did. I'm going to grab a number four round and some water and apparently fan brush with it. Uh, all right. Uh, Har Harshi's fun activity says, can you put the reference up? I can. I'm going to, I have the, um, the final take... reference, but I don't, I'm pulling up right now this steps reference as well. Okay. And also, if you guys want the final reference, it's in the, the pinned comment here in chat and it's in the description. There's a link to our website where all of that is available, including the step-by-step -step for you guys to be able to print out. And this has references for you as well. So just paint all of this in, guys. Okay. With a little bit of burnt sienna and a touch, you know, of Mars Black if you need it for coverage. 
And you'll see right away, browns tend to be a bit streaky. And because of that, I found that two coats were necessary to give a beautiful even complexion or implied complexion. If you want to do a deep dive on uh, darker skin tones, we have a video series going on right now for Oya, O-Y-A. Maybe the mods can drop a link in chat. Um, and we are doing much more realistic, uh, involved portraiture on that piece. Mm. It's a multi-stage one. I think we're on three or four. So you have time to catch up before I get her popped back up on the schedule for the next stage. which I think is fur or here. I'm not really sure. All right. Just mixing this up. I don't want to get the skin value too dark. I'm just trying to make sure we've got coverage and then I'll pull probably into just a burnt sienna. What you see me doing is using my uh, pad to reload. Now I do some things here at my studio uh, that I actually wouldn't recommend that you do for your health and shoulder, which is that for the purposes of filming, my, my palette is so far from me. I would be normally holding a palette very close and making a very short journey, but there's a no way for you guys to see the color mixes if I do that as effectively or the paint so in your own studio try to think about comfort and how things are impacting you um if, if it's hurting your body uh you know is it making it harder to do what you're doing notice that i did a little kind of up for the shoulder and i'll kind of do that a little bit on the paint on her muscles i'll give her a little bit of muscles It's just a paint in and then we'll paint her in again. Yeah. If I get a little big, like on a feature, like I feel like I got a little big on her thumb, I can come back with a clean brush. And erase that back. So I am never just stuck. Mm. So don't ever feel stuck. You've got this. You can do this. Right? It is okay to smooth out brush strokes on, on her face if you want to with the heavy body paint. If you're painting craft paint, it will kind of self-level. But when you're painting heavy body paint, it's designed to hold its brush stroke. Uh, Mary Youngblood says, a paint sitting at a table easel in my palette is right next to you. See, so yeah, you've just got to think about the journey your arm and shoulder is taking to get to the paint. Um, this company, the New Way Palettes, they do the glass palettes and they do the peel palettes. They have one that's a peel palette that is designed to hold at an easel that's spectacular. That company is New Wave. Mm -hmm. And and if I've got a clever link moderator in today, they could find the um, palette shaped new wave link and drop it in. If they can, I don't know if they can. It is very easy in a painting to become very hypercritical whenever you're doing figure painting. And that really is because we paint people, uh, we don't, uh, we see people a lot. So things that you have a lot of visual information about, you'll be a little bit harder on yourself for things like trees or clouds. Cause you've looked probably at a lot of clouds and a lot of trees and a lot of things. 
Uh, Moderator Viridian says the erasing trick is such a help. Help and oh, we lost the troll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're an emoji club, you have a troll and a band hammer in your emojis. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> oh, I'm always sorry when we lose troll. It was a self-fulfilling prophecy. Was it? Yeah. That I'm I'm gonna get blocked. The, the troll kept saying goodbye. You'll never see me again, and didn't wouldn't leave. So why were they feeling like they were never going to be seen again? I, I don't know. No. It's, it's YouTube trolls. What are you going to do? No. It's like. I don't know. Do you guys remember the old bulletin boards? <laughs> we're going to draw. We're going to dry this. It used to be on a bulletin boards. You many of you may be too young for this, but if <laughs> back in the early days of the computer computers, when, when you're. When your computer screamed at other computers so they could talk to each other. <laughs> now we would use that as a soundbite for a horror movie. But uh, <laughs> we would. We would never use that as an intentional soundbite. Who thought that up? Probably that's a known fact. It used to be you'd be in a board discussing some topic you were interested in, and people would come in, and they would do what's called, you know, flaming the room, which was they'd come in and say something so upsetting on the topic that everybody would lose their mind and start fighting. And it was like the genius of trolling. And I miss those old school trolls that used to just come in a room and just say something crazy you know, and then out to watch the chaos. Do you miss that? I don't know. It was, there's a purity to that trolling that we're lacking now. You know what I don't miss? What? Is when you're halfway through a post and your sister picks up the downstairs telephone and, and ruins the connection. Oh my gosh. I didn't have siblings. So it was just me. I never had that happen. Never had that happen. Oh, my gosh. All the time. You know, I have a MySpace account I can't even get to. That may be a good thing. So, all right. How y'all doing? Nice to see you. Thanks for coming and hanging out with us. It's lovely to see you guys today. Love to see everyone painting with us. We're just um, very nice to have such a wonderful family of people who like to paint with us. You'll find the second layer of this goes so much faster than the first. Will I? Oh, that happened on IRC a lot. Yes, it did happen on the IRC a lot, Patty. You know what we're saying. Yahoo chat rooms. Oh, my gosh. Chat rooms were just incredible. Uh, John, back before there was a GIF generator in the chat, used to collect up images and responses into a folder that were categorized by the type of response they would have. I'm not oh, kidding. That was a long time ago. He did. So you would go into his computer and there'd be like a hundred long cats, you know, for different types of like shocked responses or disgruntled responses. <laughs> now they're just there for you to respond anytime. You don't know how good you have it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going pure, pure, pure burnt sienna over the top. Come into the ears. She doesn't have to have ears. I just like it. Like, she could have hair in front of her ears, but the way I styled her hair, um, she does not have them. All right, let's just make sure we have beautiful, smooth application. And we're just going over and you'll again, you'll notice that this time it's easier to apply the color. Every layer of acrylic uh, will really make your canvas take paint easier. You would think the gesso that they put on there initially does that, but it does not because they don't like. First of all, gesso is thirsty. It's kind of, you know, it's a chalk ground. And second of all. Now the darker brown was the first skin layer. Yeah. Yeah, I did that just to give me, because that particular brown, if your brown is really transparent, which many browns are, if you add a little bars black to it, it will darken enough to make it less transparent. And that way, the second layer, you can use the bright burnt sienna and not have streakiness. I had noticed with this, 
when I did this is that, and again, browns often tend to be transparent, is even with two coats of just burned sienna, it was still just a little bit streaky. But if I hit it with a darker value underneath, I could come up with a pure burnt sienna, as you do. We are like wrapping up step two here. Here we go. Lou, Lula Bell says, I did two tutorials yesterday. Keep me occupied. Oh, as her dad was rushed to hospital, uh, tested positive with COVID, but he's doing much better today. They're weaning him off oxygen. I'm so sorry that happened to you and your dad. It is scary times. Mm -hmm. It is scary times. <sighs> Everyone send a heart with wings. Because we definitely want that to be okay. Actually, yes. I, can, I can sip my coffee. That was the end. We just finished step two. Let's recap. Okay. So what we did is I took burnt sienna, which is one of my favorite colors. Now, understand this. Some things I want to say to you about burnt sienna. Burnt siennas are not all created equal or the same or remotely like each other. If you have 10 companies with 10 burnt siennas, I should do a video about this. They're all different. Mm. They are. They're all different. And so you'll have slight adjustments. Some burnt siennas will be a little more yellow than you'd expect or darker than you'd expect or more burnt than you'd expect or redder than you'd expect. So yours may be a little different than mine and they often can be transparent. Because of this, the first layer that we painted the bodice and the face and the arms with was mixed with a little Mars black to help improve the opacity. We dry that. And then we went back with our pure burnt sienna and painted over the top to get a nice, smooth, bright color. So that's how we did that. Perfect. And now that needs to dry before we do the next layer, which is cool because we're going on to the dress and skirt so it can dry organically on its own. How are we doing? Really good. So we'll be, we just finished up here, right? And then... We're going to be coming into here, which is going to be Thalo Green and Burn Santa. So you can put up, sir, the step three and hold it for a Ooh, second so I can here. find it again. Steve, where our little step thing go? Step three. Three, step three. In step three, we're going to be painting in the dress. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. You should be able to let it go now. It's really hard to find them again. It can be. It can be. It can be so hard, and then I get so frustrated. We're going to be pulling out our cat's tongue, but you could use a big round or any brush that gives you a good application, actually. I might even use a big round brush just to make this more timely. Um, but let's start on the bodice. Take a round and your phthalo green and a little burnt sienna and mix them together, and you're going to get a very dark green, a deep forest green right here. I see you. And I know Alex, did Alex Gaming um, manage to get with one of the moderators? I think so. Yay. I know they were looking even before the show. Here we go. Just pushing a little bit there. There we go. You'll notice that when I'm doing her bodice, I kind of bring the press the brush in and curve around. So I create a brush stroke that also helps round her 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 bosom. Her bosom. Sound like a romance novel. I'm on the toe of the brush here, which is just the tip. And this is coat one, so it doesn't need to be perfect. It can be a little bit streaky. I'll bring this down some just to, you know, I use the paint, so I might as well take it off, right? No point to give it to the water. Uh, where is a good place to buy quality paint brushes? Mine are all old, says gentle side of furry. A gentle side of furry. Is that a bunny mm. or a white squirrel or eh? Sugar uh -huh. glider? I don't know. Anyways, um, or is that the gentle side of fury? 
Did I just totally? <laughs> it is Fury, not Furry. Sorry. <laughs> so uh, sorry. I, you know what? It goes fast. My eyes. I'm gentle side of Fury. Would like to know if there is a good place to buy paintbrushes. And I would like to say after that funny misstep, boom, boom. Uh, the brush guys are very good. Uh, mods have the link. And if you use the code, the art Sherpa, all one word, you get $5 off your total order. It doesn't even have to just be my brushes. It can be any brushes. They buy them at whole discount and they pass that discount on to you. And it's a great place to start building up your collection. They ship worldwide. Hmm. They're fantastic. Let's... I'm going to use a big brush. I'm going to show you guys what a big brush can do. So right. this is a number 12 round in the ruby satin line with the long handles. You guys will remember that these come in short handle and long handle. So this size only applies to long handle brushes. Always check that with this company because it really affects the size of the brush if it's on a long handle or short handle. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to do flicks. You can do this with any round brush that you have, but I'm just going to flick this out. Now you know why I gave myself some extra room. Okay. Flicky, flicky, flicky. You can see very quickly. We get there. Come in here, flicking these out, pretty easy. And now we're going to just paint the whole dress in. And you can see where sometimes a bigger brush does short work. Like imagine if I tried to do this with a number four round, It'd we would be forever. here for three hours. Yeah. Um, as the brush runs out of paint, the brush strokes will become a little bit uh, scruffy and dry, as you see there. And I just come back and get more paint. And I'm looking for the Goldilocks zone in the paint, which is just enough water and enough paint to smoothly apply to surface. Mm. And if you ever have trouble getting that, I actually have a video, I actually have a whole playlist of for people who haven't painted before with exercises and information that make your experience much easier. And many of those videos are very short, so they don't even ask a lot of you to take in the info. I definitely want this first layer to be dark. It does not have to be like the most perfect application of coverage, right? So if something is, I'm going to turn this to the side okay. so it's easier for me to get to the bottom. So if it, ha if it is uh, not perfectly painted, it isn't a problem or a place for you to stress out because there's so many layers to this dress. There we go. Big brush. Big if you're brush. wondering what this is, this is a number 12 ruby satin. I have this brush in a Cambridge. <laughs> I have it also in the silver stone. And I also have it in the uh, Grand Prix. What does that tell you? I like a brush that's a big round number 12. <laughs> Sometimes I like to show you what I have in my own uh, collection. So you know where I decided to put my money and my investments into art. Good idea to rinse your brush out thoroughly. And then remember, you're going to have a big wash session after your painting. Oops, I lost whatever that was. That's okay. I'll find it after and wash it. Now, um, we have just finished, uh, believe it or not, step three. So let's recap. Let's recap. You guys ready for the recap? I don't know where my bubbles are for the recap. Maybe that's what I draw. Oh, there they are. 
didn't drop that. Let's bubble because we're ready to recap. All right. Okay. So during step three, we painted in the bodice and the dress. The mix was burnt sienna and phthalo green. On the top of her bodice, we used my number four round, which is this brush right here. And when we were doing areas around her bodice, we curved the strokes so that there was a roundness to them. We took that down to the waist zone, and then we switched to a number 12 ruby satin round, where we did flicking strokes on the outer edge and then filled in the middle. That's what we did for step three. Ah, now, I am going to dry it, but that's because I often rest my hands on the canvas and uh, get paint all over myself. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to dry it really quickly before we put up step four. Okay. Um, that'll just be helpful to me. Yeah, just make sure you give yourself a good dry between the layers. That makes sure that as you put on the lighter layers as we move forward, that you don't pick up any of the darker colors or it have has any unusual texture, things like that as you're painting along. So yeah, just make sure you give it a quick dry. And thank you, Patty. The bubbles are back. The bubbles are back. Oh, thank you, Patty. I'm going to put out to our color mixes. Put I'm out. Put out a little mix. bit of my yellow ochre. I've got some burnt sienna left, so I have to decide if I want to leave that in or not. Oh my gosh, the bubbles are like killing my PDF. Um, all <laughs> right, a, let's put oh, up step four. Why let's put you? up step four. Oh, okay. Because we're going to do step four. Step four! It will match the step four on your notebook. Mm -hmm. So if, you're, if you printed that out for yourself and you're following along, that's where we are. And we put out yellow ochre. And now I feel like this has been up for a second. You, the, the banner co covered the yellow ochre. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Right. So we put out some yellow ochre to do the highlights and everything on her face. And now I am going to show you what you need to know about faces. Okay. So her head, I'm going to divide in half with this little kind of chalk line here. And then the halfway point from her top of her head to chin, I'm going to add a line. That's where her eyes are going to go. The halfway point between her chin and the eyes is where I'm going to place her nose. And the halfway point between her chin and her nose is where I'm going to place her lips. That's just basic face construction. And it's good to know where those things are. I am going to get a small detail brush. This is a number one Art Sherpa round. You can get that at the brush, guys, if you're looking for it. Or um, I think at Michael's, too, can't you? I think so. So, uh, number one, uh, one art trip around online, not in store. So let's come in here and let's first put in her nose. I'm going to come into the nose line and I'm going to make a small kind of little smiling line. Just that. That's all I'm putting in. That does help me though, figure out where I want to put my closed eyes. So I'm going to come here. And do her little eyelashes. Her eyelashes will start at sort of this outer area of the nostril where we've implied the nostril. You'll find that you're stronger on one side than the other. You can turn the surface if you need to. You just want some symmetry. The other place that I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a little defining details in her ears. And along her jawline. See how that's bringing her in together? So we come along our little jawline here and come along here. Now, some of this will disappear into her hair, right? Not all of it, but some of it will, because her hair is going to be Mars black. Put a little bit of a mark in. This is like, just sort of shows the shape, the basic shape of the ear. I'm going to come in, I'm going to do some eyelashes. I'm going to come up above the inner corner of her eye. Not eyelashes, eyebrows. That's what they are. 
and arc over a little matching eyebrow. She's got good brows. So we got to do a good job of trying to give her some decent brows. This is a woman who's got it together. So she probably, you know, hits the brow bar. There we go. I'm going to come underneath the nose and where the top lip is, I make a little curve like this. And then I'm going to pull in a little bit of like a little kind of center smile here. A little off there. Wherever you make a boo boo, you just come back and use the uh, damp brush technique. Say hi, erased. So I'm not stressed. <laughs> if I make a boo boo. Yeah. You don't stress, I just erase. Down here, we're going to put in a bottom lip. And it bows out here. And then we're going to give her a beautiful little top lip. like to add a little bit of a kind of smile curve right there. I think that's super helpful. I'm also going to kind of come to the outside of her neck and add some defining shadow lines. Let's give her a collarbone. So right under the chin, make a little U, come up and down. That's how you get that little clavicle in. It's almost like a winged bird. Huh. At her bosom, I'm going to make a curve parenthesis and another curve parenthesis. The curve parentheses should touch each other at their bum bums at the bottom. That makes sense. It does. Okay. Come under her arm. Come under her hands. They're fine lines. These aren't serious bits. It's all just the detail brush, so I have some control. Right. Going to kind of do one at the top and add a little thumb, and that helps pull the hand apart, right? So, a little separation. Yeah. A little separation. Sometimes a small amount of something says a big amount on the finished piece. We just did a, a reproduction in uh, the patron group where we really like saw like a small amount of something just a big amount especially on your figure painting yeah so let's come here and add that and kind of shade that in so that it's good all right that's pretty great that's not bad now I'm going to take my yellow ochre and maybe a little of my burnt sienna. Maybe bring some burnt sienna over here so I can work these together. I'm going to add some fluid to it so it'll spread out nicely. And there are some places I'm going to add a bit of a highlight. I'm going to come to her forehead and I'm wiggling my brush. All right. I'm going to add a bit of a highlight up here on her forehead. I can take my burnt sienna on the outside edge to blend this highlight out. I'm tapping my brush up and down and the paint is mixing on the surface. I'm 
I'm going to come down a little bit between the eyes here. Just a bit of a highlight. It is a mix of burnt sienna and yellow ochre. And then I'm going to come into my yellow ochre and go kind of above my nose a little bit. If you need to get control of that blend too, you just come back with a little burnt sienna. See how we do to soften that out? Quite a lovely face aspect. I'm going to come in with a little bit of my burnt sienna and yellow ochre. We're going to make a little wiggle above the cheeks. And a little wiggle above the cheeks. Load back up, burn sienna, yellow ochre. A little bit at the chin. Dipping in water. I like to come to the top of the ear a bit. It's a fussy thing, but it's worth doing. I put out way more burn uh, yellow ochre than I needed. I don't like to feel, you know, I'm under pressure. I'm going to put a little a mix of the burnt sienna and the yellow ochre that's kind of light above her eye on her lid. Her eyes are closed. She's experiencing winter. She's in the now. And so that's what's going on with her. I can always come back if I take out a little too much of my lashes, which I did over here. Come back with a dark line. I'll let it all dry for a second. Let's put a highlight above um, her little collarbone there. Very similar to the cheeks. We're going to go, see how I'm being very light with my brush? Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of dusting this. Just, just take a minute and blend it. Try not to get too much paint on, right? Like if you're having trouble getting this technique, the Goldilocks zone is paint that will come off your brush pretty easily, but isn't glopping or, you know, taking over everything. If you need to come back and control anything, like you can just come back with your burnt sienna. I can always go back with a dark line to work up the cleavage. Let's take a little mix above her arm a bit. Let's go shoulder, bicep, a little bit on the forearm hand, oh, a little highlight on the fingers and thumb. These are just subtle touches. Now, even when you're painting a figure realistically, this is not that far off from the principles that you use. You just have many more planes and skin tones that you're going to play with, you know, it's not as simplistic. But it's still, this still gives you these basic concepts. And I think I'm going to put just a little bit maybe on this side on her neck, but not down to the collarbone because I want to keep that. I want to keep that um, kind of blended. So, all right, look at her. Check that out. Um, this is a good time. If you've got anything to repair, get your detail brush out. Like I've got my little lashes here. I kind of want to fix. Okay, I might be being fussy. <laughs> so you can sit there and check. If you need to check, there's some good pictures here for you to reference to understand what you're trying to do. Right? You can, if you want to go brighter on some highlights, you can always come in with your just pure yellow ochre. I might even. See how you can do? So you can add these, these little brighter moments. Don't feel like you can't, because you can't. Just don't get into the white. All right. Look at that. So let's recap. 
So we defined in the face, and to do that, we first divided her face in half so that she had a left side and a right side. From the top of her head to the bottom of her chin, we divided her face in half again. That sets the top of her ears and also her eye line. From her eye line to her chin, we divided in half again, and we put in a little U shape there to create an implication or shadow of her nose. Between her nose and her chin and the halfway point is the center line of her mouth. So whatever mouth we set there, we're going to set between the nose and the chin. So we set her center line there. We then put in a little shadow for her clavicle. We did two opposite parentheses where the little bum bums touch to de- show her uh, bodice. We took black lines and we defined all of these elements that we put out. So we defined her lips. We defined her nose, her lids. We used the inner eyes to line up her eyebrows, and we used the outside line of her nose to line up her eyes. Right? If you've just never seen that, you might not know that. We added dark lines under the arms and along the palms to create some definition. And then we came back with a mix of yellow ochre and then burnt sienna to help it blend in to her skin tone. We put a highlight on her forehead, a small one down her nose, a stronger highlight at the top of her nose. We put little light ones at her cheeks, above her eyes, tops of her ears, uh, on the kind of top inner arc of her bosom, along the clavicle, a little on her neck, top of arm, top of arm, top of hands, top of thumb. So that's how we did that. So if you've never done that before, that's kind of the basic gist of how that's done. And this is a really good kind of first introduction into those concepts. If you love this, you should try my year-long course about face where we got crazy deep, Mm -hmm. (laughs) crazy deep into the topic. And guess what? We're halfway through. We're halfway through? We're halfway through. We're moving on to step five. Oh my gosh. And the next step is the fun step. So I'm super excited about this step. So you're going to give them step five since we recap. Step five is her hair. Now, um, I'm going to give you some tricks and some strategies of things that beginners can sometimes accidentally stumble into that I can help help you prevent by using a little chalk as a guide. Because sometimes, I don't know about you, John, but when I'm getting into hair, it suddenly becomes all about the hair and the hair can like take over everything and I can paint out things that I meant to keep in my excitement of doing hair. So I'm going to show you guys how to create breaks mental breaks you don't go like horrific mm-hmm. hairlicious awful i don't know what are you doing wait <laughs> i don't know what do you mean what am i doing I'm, i don't know <laughs> oh uh with... chloe brand says hello sherpa you're amazing and uh linda's like don't forget that this step-by-step document is available on the website for you guys to download for free so that can help you um Tammy says something about rescheduled. Is Watercolor Wednesday with the Fox being rescheduled? Yes, it was. Um, John had uh, some final stuff for his crone testing that he had to go do, and so we had to reschedule Watercolor Wednesday. He's fine. Everything's okay. We're doing it next Wednesday, 7 p.m. on Facebook. So same bad time, same bad channel, same bad everything, but next Wednesday. So that's what happened. We put a couple notices up. If you check the page, a lot of times I'll write up a notice if we schedule a bump. So if you scroll up or down on the Facebook page or go into the event, I do try to leave something behind so people are not like, wait, did I get a notification or miss a notification? (laughs) Okay. Hair. Hair, hair, hair. Let me show you my trick. I'm going to just use this chalk. So when doing hair, it's so easy for it to get out of control. And what I'm gonna do is I know I want at least like an inch, maybe even an inch and a half at the top. And think of, um, this reminds me a bit of the halos in uh, different frescoes. Mm. So the hair is going to taper in just a little bit above her chin on her neck and taper in just a little bit above the chin on her neck. For this hairstyle, you could do a bun, you could do something else. This is just what was appropriate for me in this painting, but I definitely say you should do you. Now, I can struggle painting in the black, but what I found is I'm going to get a number eight cat's tongue. You just get a brush that's a little bit larger than the four, and I'm going to load it up with black. Uh, I put a fairly decent amount of water, like a drop or two, into the brush, and I'm going to paint 
not to her face. I'm going to avoid trying to paint to her face without my number four, but I am going to get close. See what I'm doing? I'll use my four for the detail work, but this big brush can help me do the big stuff. And you can see that chalk as I get into the curls and everything is going to keep me from going off the canvas or over the arms, which believe you me is a thing that as a beginner, because you're going to be having fun painting the hair, you can really, really do because you're like hair, hair, hair. Every beginner is like hair because <laughs> it's the fun part, right? It's like the crown. Mm -hmm. All right. I see Destiny saying hello. And Tammy says you're okay. And Lee47 says your necklace. Oh, yeah. Well, we're Whovians over here. Um, if you're into Doctor Who, we have a whole bunch of Doctor Who videos. Whole bunch. Including a holiday TARDIS if you guys need one. Yep. There's <laughs> TARDISes come popping up all over the place. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. And if you're a deep, deep Canon Whovian fan, we have a mystery game that you can play, like a mystery dinner, but with videos. Oh, yeah. We've done a few things. I, I went a little deep. Man, you had to really know about Gallifrey. You had to know the Canon on the Master. You had to know some stuff about monsters. It's like, like from season one. <laughs> Hmm. to current you had to, well not dr 13 she's not in i think i think we stopped at um 11 yeah i think so that was when we did it. it was when it when we had 11 now i'm going to take my number four round and i'm going to load up again and you can see i'm kind of thinning the paint with water and bringing my brush through it to load it and then if this is how the load looks and i'll come around uh her face a bit carefully as you know, I worked hard to be here. I won't put in her hairline quite yet. If you have to roll your brush to make sure paint is out of the belly and down towards the tip, that's a thing that you can do. If the paint has creeped up onto your ferrule, just wipe that off with a towel and reload. Yeah, uh, that's just you getting used to the how brushes are loaded. And it will stop being a problem as you gain more experience. It's a very normal new artist thing to have happen. Creepy and honest, paint. Yeah, and honestly, it can happen to an artist at any point. It's it's kind of about your the the attentiveness of your load and how you're paying attention to it. And, you know, we can all get into a weird space. So right now, it's not gray hair. <laughs> it's not great hair. And I want it to be great hair. So I'm going to load some black on here and I'm going to give her a nice little hairline. All right. So kind of that little heart of a hairline. So now her face is very heart shaped, very heart shaped. And as I bring the brush out, I'm going to be using little S strokes. And I may put out some fresh black because my black has gotten kind of dry. Hmm. And when the black gets dry, it doesn't want to flow. The spice does not want to flow. No, it gets all kind of gloopy. Gloopy gloppy. Gloopy gloppy. Now, see how it's a little bit, because it's not as dry, it's flowing there. better, and you're going to see it flow better here. You move too. your cup off of that there. Oh, do I need to move my cup? Just a little bit so we can see the paint. There you go. Little S-curve stroke. Ooh. There we go. That's what we wanted. You know, I like to make sure the hair curls. This is not too dissimilar to what, you know, we had going on with the uh, Santa's hair. Oh, and for you guys who are voting on the Facebook group about the Blue Jays and the Icicle Window versus the Red Barn, they're so close, I'm going to just do both. 
I'll do the top vote on this upcoming Tuesday, which I think right now is the Red Barn by a Hair. And the following Tuesday, I will do the Blue Jays. Mm. So no worries. So like Queen's fan, Queen fans, if you want it all, you get it all. You get it all. I, I, ne I really try to give my community as much as I can. Now, I can't necessarily always get it in uh, like the year it's in because maybe it requires some more thought or design. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll try. Like, I, I, I really try to think about a tropical holiday when one has not come to me yet. But you never know. I'm working on uh, different holidays during the season, all that stuff. You know, sometimes with things, you've just got to find a time that it speaks to you. And you can see this is just about creating these beautiful little edges here in the outer edges of her hair, where you can see the curls piecing out. Uh, Maisha says, I love watching The Good Doctor and Creative Girl of Color. I couldn't get into it after they changed the main character. What? Hmm. It's like the whole doctor. They changed the main character. Like They keep doing that. Yeah. I think I took it harder to lose Stephen Moffat than I took losing my doctor. Yeah. Stephen. Like, I was upset about losing David Tennant because I really liked him. He was like my one of my favorite doctors they've ever done. But, dude, losing Stephen Moffat was like painful. It was like losing Josh Whedon and Buffy. <laughs> it hurt. It really hurt. Or I guess and Angel and all of the things that he was writing at the time where the loss of him just sucked. Sorry for the use of the word sucked, but it did suck. You can see I'm just doing little colorful curly hair. If you want even more specific little curls, you can get into your little detail brush that you used for the eyebrows as well. So just know that you can have it your way. And then there's another step that you might not know about if you're new to painting we're going to do here that's going to make a big difference on how your painting looks on the wall. If you're giving this as a gift, how the recipient will see it and feel about it. So these are some very important things that you just wouldn't know till you know. Getting that kind of in there. And then uh, Lady Fair says, I'm rocking my pink hair. Are you guys liking my new pink? Let's show it off. Let's show it off. It's like new. So it's mm -hmm. like the light pink at top and then the hot pink little ends. So I could like piece it out on my ombre. I got into it. I needed to do a holiday hair. I made us do our Christmas candles in pink too. I think I'm just channeling the spirit of Lisa Vanderpump. Not that she's passed on, don't panic. <laughs> now, when you get your hair kind of placed in, be sure that you, even though it won't necessarily show, it's a good idea to do some curling little brush strokes through her hair because the texture or effect of the brush stroke will show. Mm. I don't take it all the way edge. I just want to make sure that the halo around her head looks stunning. There you guys go. Look at that. That looks stunning, doesn't it? I don't want it just to look stunning on camera. There's, I could shorten these a lot and have them just look really good on camera because of the nature of camera. Mm -hmm. But I want to make sure your paintings at home come out too. So sometimes we do that extra step so you know because you might not know. That's right. And then uh, Kelly Stokes says, so fun. And then they filmed Doctor Who near my house. Let's all go stay with Lulaba. Uh, Lulabelle. <laughs> so I'll go stay with Lulabelle. So this is really good. Let's recap. So we recap. Sure. Step five, halfway mark. Right? Get your PDFs out. Be like, recap with me. You can take notes on the recap if they would help you too into your PDF. Even so we PDF. took a chalk tool. I use the Dritz chalk tool and created kind of a halo around her head that was about an inch, inch and a half above the highest part of her head. 
and sloped in a little bit under her jaw, just a smidge. Then I took a big brush and painted the, a lot of the area with the black paint, leaving a small space around her face and the edges of her hair. I came back with a brush I had more control over, my number four round, and carefully painted around her face, coming in and giving her a nice little bit of a hairline. Then I went on the outside edges of her halo, creating little curls and little pieces that you could see. And then when that was done, I came back with that brush and made little curling textural strokes here in her hair mm. so that it looks good on your wall. Yep, we, we did the hair. We did it. We did, did it. it. We did the hair. We did the hair. The hair. The hair, hair, hair. Got to make sure I'm caught up on chat. Okay. The hair. I think it looks the pretty hair. good. Po, 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 po. No. So. We're on another step, aren't we? We're on step six. You can pop it up, babe. Step six. Step six. So tell them no tricks. Step six. Huh? Tell, them, tell them what step six holds for them while they're step waiting. Step six holds for you. You're going to be finishing up her dress. We're going to be painting out the boughs and branches on her dress. And we're going to be giving them dimensionality and form using color and volume and show you several mixes that are great for branches if you've been painting in this new series since the car, so if you want to know which videos have the step-by-steps and very similar techniques, if you go all the way back to Santa's sleigh and then you go to the snowbirds and then you go to snow gorges, these will all tie together. So those color mixes are all related. Um, and extra explanation. I see. I look up here and I need to look right here. This is distracting to me. All right. That's okay. So, uh, well, I rewatch and I'm like, what am I doing? Why does anyone watch me? <gasps> very grateful that you do. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'm also going to put out some new colors to the kit and caboodle. We're going to put out some yellow, cad yellow. So that's cad yellow medium. I'm going to put out a little more burnt sienna over by the green because this will still continue to be in it. And we're going to put out some fresh white. Now, I did open, I did pop a big case of white for my thing, but it looks like I've still got some white here, so we're still good. Hmm. Put out some more white, and we're going to use a similar uh, thing. We're going to go number four up here and then the big brush down below. Okay, so I'm going to take my green and a little bit of my burnt sienna and kind of forest it up. Right, but now I'm going to get some yellow into it. You can see that lightens it a bit. I'm going to come up top and paint a second layer on her wonderful bodice. It's pretty dark still, but it is definitely brightened from the first original color. Going here and coming down now underneath. Her bosom, I'm going to add a slightly darker green, just almost pure green here to exaggerate that area because, you know, we do. Mm -hmm. A little bit of yellow into the green up here. Come along the top. That creates almost like a little bit of a shadow down there. Just grab a little bit of my green. And that really just gives us a nice finished top. Sometimes it just takes a little paint to get you there. Woo! Wonderful. That stays, it stays pretty dark like that. Let's get back into our number 12 round. You could use my cat's tongue. You could use a fan brush. There's a lot of things that you could use. We're going to just use this so you can see how a big brush is helpful. I'm going to get a little of my green and brown together, but now I'm going to mix some cad yellow into that deep mix. And actually, I'm going to go almost backwards. We're going to layer from the bottom up. I'm going to come to the bottom, turning the canvas on my side. We talk about this a lot. Move your canvas, not your body. That's because when you're trying to paint, it's really tempting to change the position of, 
of yourself rather than the canvas to treat it like it's the most important guest at your personal art party but it is not you are i'm gonna flick this out sometimes i'll put a little more dark green into it here at the center of the dress the flicks will be kind of straight and then immediately they'll flick left when you go left and they'll flick right when you go right and i'm alternating pure phthalo green and a little bit of the cad yellow into that mix and i'm tiling the branches if you can see and what that means is that i'm starting at the bottom and then each layer kind of layers over the one uh, underneath it uh, irene says i'm learning to draw stuff and doodle so many failed attempts but learning is fun yeah, you know, don't make your, yeah, I love it. She's giving you very good advice there, which is like, keep it fun. The outcome of your current doodle or drawing or painting is much less important than the experience you have doing it. So keep it fun. Coming through here, sometimes with some pure green, right? Just the pure phthalo green. And when I get up a few inches from the bottom, you know, sometimes I have to go back and like check. I see it from a different angle, I'll come back with a darker value and make sure that the bottom of my skirt, this is an area to keep track of because it's one where the painting can become less cohesive and whole. So uh, check your painting, get back, look at things from a new perspective. There's a lot of tips on success strategies in the PDF. Um, that we don't always get to cover in the online lesson. Together, they are a powerful combo. I probably will be putting out more phthalo green because we're going to be going through. Oh, goodness. Hi, look at my part. Through a lot. We got to work on that position. <laughs> ah, top of my head. Top of it. <sighs> I got to get in here and rehearse more. A lot of times I'm trying to stay out of y'all's way and out of John's way as he's switching the camera. But I think I'm in it more than I realize. No. Just flicking through, and you can see that we curve the branches to the right on the right side, curve the branches to the left on the left side. Add a little yellow, create a little light layer, create another layer of skirt. Sometimes more green, sometimes more yellow. We're doing a varied color on the canvas. We get to the outside edges. We flick those branches. Flick your branches. Flick them, flick them, flick them. And can take a couple of layers. Like if you're having, uh, if your paint isn't giving you good coverage, you may need to come back for a second layer. And that's okay. Uh, some of the student paints are very light on pigment and they can create a scenario where you really need to do that. But even so, phthalo green tends to be a transparent color. Uh, yellow, uh, cad yellow tends to be a transparent color. And as we know, burnt sienna. So even as they all work together, they still have that tendency to be more of a glaze. I can hear like done. Hmm. I could totally hear the furious foot, the pedaling. I'm switching. Why is that? Well, because I think I move a lot and you like oh, switch no, real fine. fast. And no, no, it's a good thing. It's just really interesting because it's been so long, uh, you know, because we're just recently back at the easel that, you know, you hear those like sounds that you're so familiar with. I don't know if you noticed it too. 
I, well, I can't hear anything because I have headsets Because you have that headset on. I can hear all the things. Can you hear me, though? Mm-hmm. Just oh. you. Just me? Aw. I have your undivided attention. I have been on John's side of the uh, the studio, like for uh, April Fool's video that we did, where John painted, and uh, <laughs> it's a hard job, man. So I'm going through here and I'm touching up my branches, and then when I really get a good mix of everything in that I like, I'm gonna add a little white to my green yellow mix, and come through here and some details. See how the details, the paint underneath is still a little wet. Um, I definitely want more yellow into my light green. And you can see how that creates a another very complicated and delicious layer of skirt. So her skirt just feels full. I mean, in real life, this would probably be a very difficult skirt to wear. I'm going to turn her to side, babe. Probably be a very difficult skirt to wear because super painful, right? Mm. Branches are oh, yeah. not always a fun skirt. We used to go to TRF, which is the Texas Renaissance Festival, and a lot of people had uh, skirts made of branches, and they didn't look comfortable. <laughs> But you know what you got to do for the cosplay. You can come back with dark green and again, keep dimensionality. The skirt will only look, the attention you give the skirt will only make it look better and fuller and better on your wall. Because again, our goal is not just to have it look good on my camera or John's camera, because I can't turn on the camera, so let's call it John's camera. Uh, the goal is also to make sure that yours looks good for you, for your family, for who you're giving it to. So giving you these examples, making sure we take the extra steps and that extra time is what's going to help you be successful. Shall we recap? Mm -hmm. choo, 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 choo. All right. So we did the second layer of the skirt. The second layer of the skirt was phthalo blue, cad yellow medium, and burnt sienna. We came through on a mix up here with a little burnt sienna and cad yellow medium into some phthalo green, and we added highlights on her bosom. We took some pure phthalo green and added a little bit of shadow down the sides, and then we began flicking out the skirt. We flipped on the side so that we could tile or layer each layer branches up, and we were doing a mix of burnt sienna, phthalo green, and cad yellow. We did a variant mix, and whenever we needed to, we came back with pure phthalo green to fill in. We did that with a big brush to give us nice, gorgeous flicking strokes to make her dress seem very dressy, right? And we did lots and lots of layers. When we got up to the top, we went back down because we added into the mix of a little burnt sienna, a lot of phthalo green, and a little cad yellow, a little bit of white to create another layer of dimensionality to her skirt. So as you can see, you get highlights and lowlights, and it's about just taking a couple layers to it. It's about just kind of being in it a second. So you just did step six. Shall we bubble them? Mm -hmm. Bubble their step six? Let's see if I see anything. Ah! Oh, dropping things. Oh, all right. Do, 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 do. I think everything is okay. <sighs> wonderful, wonderful, now, wonderful, wonderful. We're on step seven. We are on. I'm getting bubbles all over the <laughs> PDF. All right, so we're going to be doing step seven. Step seven is ornaments, and we're going to be just using our pouncer to do that. Now I'm going to put out some cad red and some quinacridone magenta. If you only have one, it's okay. I just like the mix of them together a little bit. I think that they create um, a really nice aspect. So I'm going to put these out because we're also um, going to be getting her lips in. 
right? So these are two things. To put these on, though, I'm really going to need to have it dry. Did we already put up step six? I did. Uh, okay. Step seven. Step seven, I mean. Yes. Yeah. So just make sure you dry all the way through the layers to make sure you're not going to get any... When you pick up your your reds and things and you use them on there, you don't want to muddy them up with any of the wet green paint from underneath. So make sure you thoroughly dry it between those two and that'll make sure everything works out. I shouldn't... Uh... Yeah. So she's just drying that off. I didn't... Don't know. Oh, you should click subscribe while you're waiting. That way you can be subscribed. I don't know. Um, normally I have more stuff you know, prepared to talk about, but I didn't think she was going to be gone this long. So I'm afraid to... There, there she See? This is an important time to make sure that the skirt is dry um, because green will gray your red and take away its vibrancy. If you're painting with student paint, you may need to do the ornaments white first, dry them, and then go carefully back over them with red. Mm. That's a trick if you're finding that your paint just isn't covering the green underneath that can really help you. But let's start with the lips. Let's start with her lips. So the mix of the lips I like to do is a little bit of my quinacridone and cad red together. Right, and do that up there. And we're gonna come in and the top lip will be a little darker than the bottom. So I'm gonna paint this in. There we go. Nice little tie, slightly darker on the top than the bottom. And that's because if there's overhead light, the lip has a shadow. That's all it is. Now I'm going to come down and get a little, a smidge of white to lighten the bottom lip. I don't want to lighten it a lot. I just want to lighten her some. Too much. I may come in with some yellow. There we go. Just very carefully with my detail brush. Come back with a little of my quinacridone pink. All right. Come back with my quinacridone pink. I'm gonna kind of shade the outer edges here. And then right in the center, I might even a little white in there, but I'm careful with the amount of white I'm using. A little bit of a highlight in the center and a smidge of one up here. I know I'm spending a lot of thoughtful time on this. <sighs> uh, we just want to create big impact with little changes. And so what we should have is a nice mouth. This should be reflective of our ornaments that are going on. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to load up with a little of my CAD red. It's okay to get a bit of the magenta into it. You can just go pure CAD. And I'm taking my pouncer here, our Sherpa pouncer. You can also just paint circles. Mm -hmm. That's also okay. And I go twist. Let's come here and do one. Twist to the right. Sometimes I'll twist to the left. And that's how I get kind of a more solid circle. I think it's a good idea to distribute these around pretty evenly. And you can see the paints that I have do absolutely cover over the green. But remember, your paint might be different than mine, and so it could be very different in how it covers her dress. Mm. 
If you're having trouble at this stage, stop. Go do all of them with white first and then come over with the red. Sometimes I put some of these off the dress just so that we can see that things are I can always turn her to the side. And then sometimes you can see some openings where you're like, oh, we need an ornament there. We have to leave room for lights because we know we're going to come through and do some lights as well. I think I'll fill that hole with a light. So here's where we're on that. When you're done with that, be sure to put this in water and wash this out right away because it can be really hard on these sponges if the paint dries on them. My connection is being so crazy right I, now. I know I had to reset the uh, thing so that chat would catch back up. Did you? Yeah. yeah. That was wild. What was that about? I'm not sure. All right, so on her belt, I'm going to just take a detail brush in my mix of CAD and quinacridone, so I get a bright color. Again, you could use just red if that's all you've got. All right, put a little belt on her. Because, you know, stylish. Mm. Um, Shannon says, uh, sorry, I've been quiet. My chat's acting weird today. This painting is so awesome. Dude, the chat's acting weird for us as well. We totally get it's, it. We're, it's... like, super about it. Chat is all. Now, chatty. I have an art tip in the PDF. So if you are interested in that, you can check that out. I do leave that up to all of you in your personal thing. I will say for me, it was good information to have and has made my time as an artist more enjoyable. And I feel it allowed me to make artwork that can be received better by others and in the intention in which I created it. Because that's what it is, right? When we create work, we want to help people feel amazing and feel good. And we want to create work that helps them do that. So there's a little extra bit in there, but I don't want to get into it online because the world be crazy right now. <laughs> All right, let's recap. We used, oh, I just took the pouncer and I put it in the water, but we took a pouncer. <laughs> just, nee, nee, nee. All right, we came in and we painted her lips. We used a mix of quinacridone magenta, cad red, a uh, little cad yellow, and titanium white, but only minimally, because we don't want to take her, her lips into a very, very light pink color. We want to keep these rich and full and red. Her top lip is a little darker than her bottom lip. We did a little micro mixing there to... Create a little bit of a highlight in the middle. Uh, then I came through using a mix of quinacridone, magenta, and cad red. But you could just use cad red. And I created these using my pouncer. Um, you can just use these, draw little circles with a round brush and paint them in. And we added a little bit of a belt. We've really got to um, allow all of this to dry. But our next layer isn't on top of it. So it can dry naturally. Which means we are up for step eight which is the lights and the highlights and the glows. Ooh. Oh, wait, no, we will have to dry for that because I'll have to get my T-square out. So dry your canvas. Dry. John put up step eight, and I'm going to dry while step eight is up there so I can find <sighs> it again. Dry, 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 dry. 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 <sighs> yep. So thoroughly dry between the layers because you do want to make sure that, you know, if you left any thicker paint down there, that as you get to that next layer, you don't pick it up with the... Uh, your your brush and then smear it around and have those unfun things because you want your highlights to be nice and crisp and pure with the with your little with the paint not muddied up from the paint below on the layer below. So there you go. That's the that's your paint theory today. 
Right. You guys are doing so right. We're on that step eight. We're on step eight. I'm going to uh, also include fluid white paint in this particular step, but we're going to put it out in a minute. I'm going to start with clean water. Get yourself some clean water. You don't want dirty water for the step. I'm going to pull out a little of my yellow. I'm going to get a smidge of my white into that yellow, but mostly it's just yellow. Mostly just yellow at this stage. And I'm going to start the basis for some of her little glow highlights. And this is just these little radiating out circles. Okay, we're done? Mm -hmm. You can get just yellow in if you want. I like to put them in a variety of places. So I just kind of, these are almost like little rose strokes, except we're creating the idea of little glows coming out. I think I'm just getting more into yellow. And it's really just depending on do you get good coverage with the brush that you have or do you need something else? There we go. You can see just a little. And I might need some water. Come here. Anywhere that you just feel like, you know, some of her dress needs some filler. Yeah. Filling it up. Using my number four round, just little concentric circles going out. And I'm going to be kind of dancing around, making it a little hard for John. Oh, no, you're but fine. that's because my little artist brain is looking for spots that have openings that should take a little bit, a little white white in there, a little bit of my glow. You can have as many glows as you want. Only the glow knows where the glow should be. <laughs> I think the lights just, you know, help the dress sort of fill out and pick up that sort of festive energy. Oh, yeah. And, and again, you can see it's, it is thoughtful, but it's not so precious that you need to be worried. Now, if anyone decides to cosplay this dress, send us a picture. Oh my gosh, please. All right. Again, you just look for places where you're like, oh, a light would, would be nice here, or there's not a right or wrong amount. You just want to, it's like decorating your Christmas tree at home. It's just what is right for you. Now I'm going to come here and go through all of these with a little bit of my, just a little bit maybe of some, in the centers, I try to be kind of cautious about it because I need to also have some room for the glows to come out and the white paint needs to be able to show. These are just little touches. Oops, that's too much. It won't hurt it, it's just a little stronger than I wanted. These are like little kisses. Kind of saying that the circles are a little lighter in the center. See, the paint isn't heavy on it. It's almost like a dry brush, right? Yeah, it's very light. It's light off my brush, light on the surface. Just creating some value. 
Now I'm going to put out my fluid white paint. Everything now is fluid white paint. The lips I can do right now with no difficulty. We'll go up to the lips and then I'm going to dry this to do my X's. I'm going to come here at the top of her lip here and add just the tiniest little reflections. See how they're very small? And then on her bottom lip. And I feel like this one is too big and not where I want it to be, so I'm going to take it away. There you go. So just a little reflection on her lip to, you know, she got glossy lips gloss on. She got glossy lip gloss on. Give her a good glossy. There we go. Little, little lights and little reflections. And you can come back uh, if you need to with any of your paint and just be like, kind of take anything out, minimize. So you've got lots of room there. For this, these need to be dry for the next thing. Or you're going to drag paint all over your surface. You ready? All right. And so if you're drying and you find yourself going, what am I going to do while I'm drying? You can hit that subscribe button. That way you can be subscribed and be part of our community. And if you hit the little bell and click all, I think, then you get notifications when we go live. And we can tell, and you can come join us we do all these cool things which we like to have people with us so it's fun i don't know what she's doing is that all right there yes all right so you can use a t-square if you have trouble getting a straight line to do this and i'll show you real quick how you would do that and then i'm going to freehand it oh, hold on a second wrong camera there you go but if i'm there trying you. to do this little x technique and i just have a hard time getting a straight line I can use T-square or tape or anything to get that. So there are guides that you can use. Or if you've got a steady hand, I'm not saying that I do. You can freehand it as well. I'm not doing it in the center because I'm going to come back with a little dot. These are just the twinkles off the lights. Um, I try to make a plan where I'm not going to be taking my hand through wet paint. Sometimes my plan works. Sometimes it does not. This is an example of when I should have moved the canvas and not myself. <laughs> but sometimes I think about Dawn and... Now we're getting these things done. Just little twinkles. I think of the song Twinkle Twinkle Little Star when I do this. Mm. Does it help me? I don't know. <laughs> just something that happens. It's just what can you do but think of it. But again, you can use a T-square or tape or a lot of things to make these perfect if you want them to be perfect. And the reason I have to worry about it being dry is you can see whenever I'm here, you can see the canvas sort of bend in. It's because I rest my hand against the canvas. Mm. If you want to avoid that habit, use something called a mall stick, M-A-H-L. Don't actually ask me spelling. Hmm. But I believe that's it. But it's a rest for your hand. Helps you steady your hand. Uh, Leslie's like, oh, if you do post a picture. Oh, uh, Suk, uh, Suk. Oh, air. Wonder if I could create this dress using green tool. I don't see why you couldn't. I think actually green tool would be an excellent material choice to do this. Mm. You know, you could probably use soft materials 
and uh, the LED setups they have for garmentry and get a very good effect. Probably. And we're going to go through and we're going to create some highlights and dots in the center. So you dot the center of everything. And then I'm going to highlight the top of all the bulbs, which is a little bit of a dash. Dot the center. Don't let me forget any. In the busyness of a lesson, it's easy to miss one or two. So don't let me forget any. All right. We'll keep an eye out. You can use a dotting tool here. to get a very raised dot. I think we talked about that in the step-by-step. Uh, -step. Mm-hmm. but they'll both work. Back of your paintbrush. Mm-hmm. Back of your paintbrush is really good. It's about an overall aspect of it. I hope everyone is loving the recaps and all the stuff that we're doing. Oh, yeah. All right, so there we go. That turned out nice. So now we've got some little balls, a little glitter, a little bit of light. It looks pretty good. What? Let's recap. So what do we do? We added some highlights to her lips. We f kind of in curving strokes using our number four, drew radial concentric circles going out in cad yellow medium, sometimes with a little bit of titanium white everywhere. We went back through and kind of kissed those with a little white in the center, but as a glaze, very, very lightly. We then took fluid white paint, and you could use a tool to help you create straight lines. You could freehand it. We did little X's where there were supposed to be little sparkles, and then we put a little dot in the center. We also went through and highlighted all of our ornaments so they looked like they were in reflected light and very shiny. Guess what we're on? We're on step nine, and it's going to be fun. Step nine. I hope you guys love this with the recaps and the steps and the chapters and the step-by-steps. Because <sighs> I feel like I'm seeing some really successful paintings mm -hmm. coming into the group, coming into Facebook, coming into things. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Share with your friends. Tell people where you're getting this awesome art education. It's so super appreciated. All right. You guys are ready to do the thing? Mm-hmm. Now, this next part, and I think I'm going to start out, I'll just do my number four initially. You could do your detail brush. We're going to go through and we're going to put greenery, and then we're going to put a little bit of flowers. This is sort of a kind of crown in her hair. I'm going to need to put out some more green paint. It's the same mixes that you've done in the dress. If you're at all worried about the, oh, that was more paint than I needed by so much. Do not do as I do. It can help to take your chalk tool and give yourself a little bit of guide about where you want her little crown to be. Yeah. Right? We want to give her a nice crown. And she feels like the beautiful princess that she is. It's in her crown. So draw it in so it doesn't get crazy. <laughs> I'm going to take a little bit of my... Thalo green and burnt sienna on my number four round. And I'll come through and I'm going to put in these very dark leaves that you guys will barely be able to see, but does show on the surface and is a nice starting value. These are touch pull strokes. When I come around to the other side, I will switch directions on the touch pull stroke so that her crown uh, has a nice sort of symmetry. I'm going to add some yellow into my burnt sienna phthalo green mix, and we're going to come in and start adding some of those white, those kind of like white leaves. Now, you can make these more like the tree, like if you want them to be like what's on her, like these are greenery. 
And you can see how the dark green paint underneath pulls in. So if you want to do that, or you can do, if you want them to be like leaves like flowers, little touch pull strokes. Or both is what I have here. Kind of makes it feel like, oh, there's different kinds of leaves or greens or hollies. Because these could be hollies, these could be berries. Just a little bit flicking out. Just fun. A little bit of this. I like to get some white into it. Little flicks and pulls and just making some wild plants. You can see how we're doing that. We're just making some wild plants. We'll push. So if we push in, they look like leaves, and if we flick out, they look like little branches. Mm. Hopefully you guys can see the differences on those. Mm -hmm. And just go through and make sure she's got a beautiful full crown. That speaks to how stunning she is. Now, when you have that in and you're happy, you will want to dry it because the red might not look very nice if we put it into the green because those are complementary colors and they gray each other out. So make sure you thoroughly dry between those layers and get them all that way. No, you don't have any muddied or smeared little headdress stuff. You don't want your leaves to get muddied up. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, once we know that we're not going to be losing our brightness, we'll come into that same mix. That's our cad red and even our a little of our Quinn Magenta. I do mix it stronger to the CAD sometimes, but you can just do a one-to-one -one if you just want that kind of wonderful luminous color. And I'm going to just tap the brush. And where I do these little pull strokes, it looks like little berries or flowers or buds, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. When I change directions, I'll change direction of how I'm pulling the little pull stroke. And it's okay to bring some down a little bit far. You just want to give her something that's glorious. Help her feel glorious and amazing. It's good for your heart. You help her here and your heart will feel good there. All right. Just a stunning little bit. And then I sometimes will get a little of the white into the mix. And just put in a couple little highlight pieces just to give some dimensionality. The way plants do. Sometimes it also helps the red really pop. Just that little kiss. So what did we do? We took a number four round and we using our initial green mixes, which is the phthalo green, burnt sienna, and cad yellow. We created a series of very dark, touch pull strokes and flicking strokes to kind of imply berries and branches and things, but very lightly. These are very delicate little bits. We put a dark layer in and then we went up with highlights using more yellow and more white. We dried that and then we mixed cad red and quinacridone pink together, did little touch pull dots and strokes around her crown to give them little berries or flowers or whatever you'd like to imagine that they are. And then we came back adding a little white into that mix and added some highlights. And that is her crown. We are nearly done. Mm -hmm. I want to thank everybody who's here today for being here and participating in this. Let's put out our fluid paint. <gasps> oh, my gosh, John. What's that? I took my splattering tools away and didn't bring them back. Oh, well, I'll, I what, I'll think... put up step 10 while, you, while I go get them. Okay. So uh, on step 10, we are going to be adding snow. Now, for many of you, you're going to want the painting to finish here. If you haven't done splattering before, if you're not familiar with splattering, um, it can be super stressful. I think that they are in the kitchen where I was watching them. Or we just pull a new galaxy set open. I don't know. I can also do a whack brush method that's pretty good. That works fairly well. Um, now, my tricks are around splattering. I have a video about how to do splatters and snow and stars and sea foam and stuff. And definitely watch that if you've never done a splattering technique before and you really want to have her be catching snowflakes with her upreaching arms. Um, but it's, again, 
also okay to sign right here. The other tip that I really have to suggest to you is that before you splatter on the canvas, test your splatter on a scratch piece of paper. If you're not real familiar with your tools, I'll do a double brush whack method. I haven't demoed one of those in a while. We'll see how that goes. If I'm gonna do a two brush whack method, and this is my old whacking brush, you can tell because <laughs> our handle is super, um, super cracked. I'm gonna take a large brush and I will load it with some, I'm gonna take a large brush and kind of load it with some of my fluid paint, but I will still get some water in there. And then basically I'm gonna take two brushes and I'm gonna whack over here and make sure that I've got good snow. The issue with this method is it gets the most splatter back on you. So I'm going to have a bunch of titanium white freckles. From the backlash snow. It, it, it is backlashy snow. It really is. I'm going to have so, I'm going to have to like get makeup remover and. <laughs> <laughs> now, a trick is if you don't want too much of the splatter, right, onto mm. her, one thing that you can do is you can take something to create or resist or protect maybe some of the features on her face. I think that's a nice amount of snow, but I don't want necessarily more. You need, so, a, you need to snow. So what I do is I just take mask. a couple pieces of little tape, and it's very loose. I don't even press it all down. I don't just, want it all pressed down. I just want to know that her features and maybe some stuff is maybe not going to get as much snow. So that creates a little bit of a resist. So I can more aggressively put some snow in her hair and ah. all around her. So she doesn't get like a snowball to the face. Oh, see. so she has just a perfect amount of snow. That works, but not too much snow. <laughs> I, however, am all like I don't know if you can see it, but I'm I have snow freckles now. I you felt can, them. I felt them happening. I can totally see the snow. Can freckles. you see the snow freckles? Yeah. <laughs> so you maybe don't want to do this next to your best sofa or uh, your good granite. If you do get it on anything, you don't want to get it on rubbing alcohol or our triple brush rescue can help take that right up. Um, but you can't get mine yet, so you're gonna have to go get rubbing alcohol. And then uh, the other thing you can do is take it outside and just, uh, no one's gonna notice the snow on the on the snow. You do have to be careful in your whacking method because you can over whack. You can over whack. The whacking method is the hardest method. I haven't demoed it in a while and normally demonstrate, but again, there's the video. Uh, I don't know if the moderator has got splattering. Moderator Cat Yellow nailed it. Uh, I did the whacking method and my brush broke, says Rachel <laughs> Another danger is your brush can break. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it definitely, there, there are some risks. Uh, there's a flick method that you can do with a fan. You can load it up on the fan and then flick, flick. So, uh, or you can flick a brush. There are several ways to do that. Some people just dot out one dot at a time, or you don't have to worry about doing that. Now, when that is all done. I'm going to take a little bit of my white paint on my detail brush and I'm going to come over here and add a signature. I am not going to sign it in red or some color because I don't want the whole painting to disappear. Oh my goodness, I have paint all over my shirt. Into the signature. I don't want my painting to be about the signature. I want it to be about the painting. Oh, mm -hmm. if you have the PDF, you got your final touches thing, and then you've got some really cool advice on uh, what to do with your finished piece, uh, things that, what? <laughs> you got paint all over the place. We'll have to go use some, use some. I'm going to uh, go wash the sweater. Um, <laughs> some Sherpa soap. It's just awkward. So awkward. So please feel free to download that, please you know, use the uh, references, use the traceable, use the tools that we have. Next week, we're going to be on a big canvas again, and we're doing a black Christmas stallion. So it's a beautiful black stallion. We've done those before. We're pretty good at them. But we're adding um, some gorgeous wreath around him. And then I guess I'll have to go check the vote. It'll be a red barn Tuesday night. Uh, my mom's on Mondays in the evening. Uh, so that's fun. If you need to have something to do, come by on Watercolor Wednesday because we do watercolors on Wednesday on Facebook. Join the Facebook group. Come be on the website. Guess what? Videos are on the website again. 
Mm -hmm. Did you see that? I did. So our video search tool and the team is busily getting them up there. Apparently our ire finally had some, I don't know, impact or something. (laughs) (laughs) (sighs) But it does make that easier for you. All those resources are there. And I really want to see you guys again. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye. It's a lot of fun, believe